Um, I don't want to bore you with numbers this morning, but we might have to look at them a little bit. Because uh, at the end of the day, if the economics don't work, and if the money is not there, there is no more money for charity, for environmental program, for poverty programs. So everything is interlinked to the economics. What is very important to look at is where does this economic sort of lie? As we know, the US is uh, huge, has a huge economy. It has about 26% of the GDP of the world. And it used to have 23%, and now it's about 26%. I'm not here to speak about the United States, but it's hard not to when it has such an important presence on the economic side. To be unemployed is, a, is, is very difficult. I don't know what it is because I've never been unemployed, but I could just maybe imagine it. That means that a father or mother comes in their family and they stay at home. They might start drinking. They might be aggressive with their children. They lose confidence. And that's what it's about. That's the serious part. Because that means that if you have two, three children, your parents are very depressed, or one of them is very depressed, and, and it just has negative consequences on the whole family unit. So it affects two to three children. And then that carries on for generations. And then what does that create? It creates social instability, violence. What we saw in London is just the beginning. So we need to really solve the big issues and the economic issues and really live or try to live within our means and not have too many assumptions that are too aggressive and really disappoint, disappoint the communities, the families, the corporation, and all the citizens of a country. This, um, these are new graphs that came out. There's 45 million people in poverty in the United States. It is the highest level since 1993. Solutions. We have to look at if the income tax is the highest place of revenues, like I showed you before, what can we do to get people employed? A number that's very, very important is to know that 65% of job growth in this country are done through small businesses. If you are a small business today and you go to the bank and you ask for a loan, you don't get one. So therefore, how do we actually stimulate small businesses? And I don't hear that a lot in the media. You know, I, I hear a lot about getting people back in their jobs, which is very, very important. But basically, small businesses, they create jobs. That's where people employ. A small business that was, let's say in 2008, you had a small business. You started with uh, five people. You're going to go to maybe 30 people, 100 people, 150, 300, and then it grows. What worries me is that that backlog now is, has disappeared. So if I were to start injecting money into small businesses today, it would only have a ripple effect in three years from now. So it won't solve the problem today. So in other words, all the businesses that stopped or started in 2008 are not giving fruit now because they didn't have enough capital. So we have to follow the cash. Where is the cash? So the cash sits with individuals that are wealthy. It sits outside for the corporation, outside of the United States. with some corporation inside. And the government doesn't have any more money. And they're still giving money, very generously, but they don't have a lot of money. We saw through the, the balance sheet and the income statement that it's very tight. So let's go follow where the cash is and see how they can 
fill the gap for now and stimulate those, those venture capital or the small businesses and get that economy going. To give 4,000, 7,000 a break to corporations for social benefits, it's good, but it's not strong enough. So what will make a difference is the repatriation, for example, of one trillion that is sitting outside of the borders of America. Given incentives to the corporation to bring that cash back. They can, of course, they can do a dividend if they want, but have something in a plan that will permit us, permit them to have a tax break or an incentive to invest in small businesses. That is crucial. Innovation is one of those very important words for every sector. My work is, um, I started and I had 400 magazine and created 60 internet sites around the world. It took me about 15 years consolidating one industry. I was sort of the Craigslist around the world, or eBay. A small eBay with 18 million items uh, for sale. But really, my growth was about 50% every year, which half of it was organic, and the other uh, was uh, acquisition base. But challenging innovation and launching products is so, so important. Then I sold that business and started uh, a new business, and now we're the leaders in the news for the arts. The what is interesting in the arts, to talk about what I know a little bit about, is that there's a correlation between good, strong economy and creativity. The number one market in the arts, and arts includes auctions, fairs, uh, antiques, it does not include uh, even tourism and uh, culture. But the arts as such is, um, is very linked to the economy. The United States is number one in the art market. Number two used to be the UK, but it's China. Why is it that we have very few artists coming out of France in the last decades? Or, Span or, Span or in Spain or Egypt or the different countries that used to be great empires. Correlation between the arts, innovation, and economics is stronger than we think. If the economy is good, it stimulates people to think out of the box. And that's what's very important. And this summit is about the cross-disciplinary approach. It's thinking out of the box. It is not to have a linear, linear thoughts meaning living in the disciplines with a silo. It's a creative thinking, means integrating different disciplines to get to a solution. For example, if you're CEO of a corporation, you need the marketing, you need the legal, you need the finance, you need all these departments, human resources, to make a good decision and to have a good company on the tracks running properly. Same thing if you have to make a decision on Afghanistan, you've got to be creative and innovate, and you cannot make decisions only with politicians in a room. That is wrong, because you have historians, you have the culture that you have to understand, the psychology of people when you go into Afghanistan or Iraq or any country. You've got to think out of the box and put the human resources in there and feel out the people, understand their culture. 